Hey guys, so I recently modeled, sculpted, rendered this crispy chicken sandwich render in Blender and I just wanted to go over with you guys how I accomplished the styling, this texturing, the sculpting and go through how I accomplished the crispy chicken sandwich render but also the workflow that I went through and how you can use it for other similar projects. So the bread for me was actually one of the hardest parts to figure out and it wasn't so much the sculpting that I found hard but it was such a simple object the hard part was figuring out how to add complexity to it in order to just push it enough to become realistic. Um, and so after looking at pictures of bread for much too long, I, I found that I could add just that, that right amount of complexity by doing two things. One was by adding just really subtle displacement all over the mesh. And you can see in the rendered image, that just picks up light in a way that that makes it more realistic to your brain. The other thing I did was um, add really subtle but distinct variations to the color. And you can see I did that um, with these different shades of brown and tan. And so I found that was super helpful in accomplishing this look and making it look just a little bit more realistic. And so looking at the bread, about half of the work was done in Blender, but then the other half was done in Substance Painter. So if I come over here, so you can see in my Substance Painter file, this is kind of the finished texturing of my bread. And forgive, the unrealisticness of it. It's just not in a, a professional render yet. Um, but there are a couple of things I did and I just stacked effect on effect and effect. And the first thing we talked about was color. And so I introduced uh, four different colors into this in order to um, give it the complexity I wanted. Now, if I uncheck these, you can see the colors slowly leaving. And then as I put them back on, you can see the, the complexity is being added back in and some of these are a lot more subtle than others like this one is really subtle but you can see it especially down below at the bottom of the bread when we toggle this on and off it's almost just like little pieces of the, of the bread that were baked a bit longer now other than the coloring i the other main thing i did in order to push the realism of this was that i added some height channels. Now I stacked two height um, channels on top of each other and you can see all that is it's it's just a fill layer with everything except for height unchecked down here. And you see as I uncheck these this is kind of that that model I have inside uh, Blender and then I added a Voronoi texture on top just to give it when you make bread there are always like folds from the dough that remain and then I stacked on top of that just kind of this noise texture here. And I played with the, the intensity and stuff, but that, that just, I felt, gave it that inconsistency that made it look a bit more realistic. And then other than that, I added a roughness channel. I didn't do a ton with that to add complexity. I basically just gave it an even height across. So once I had that, I exported it into Blender, and you you never want to take anything from these programs at face value. Um, you always want to check and make sure that it's to your liking. So when I brought this in, the bread looked a little bit, it, it looked like this. It just looked a little bit too intense. And so that's when I just made it a little bit more subtle in order to fix, uh, make it fit with my render. And you can always play with this a little bit more to make it exactly how you like it. I ended up just keeping it here. It's It might be a little bit more wrinkly than your average piece of bread, but I, I liked it for this. Okay, so the next hardest thing that I had to figure out was um, the chicken. Now let's undo all of these except for that chicken. Okay, so let's just pull the chicken over here real quick and see what's going on. So the chicken is just the product of a lot of modifiers placed on top of it. So the first thing I did um, is I just brought in a cube. Let's bring in one for example and I subdivided the heck out of it. Something like that, right? And then from there I just 
sculpted it. I went over to sculpt mode, that, and I just kind of moved it around until it was how I liked. But what I didn't show is that I manipulated it a little bit more in edit mode before I brought it to sculpt mode, but I'm sure you guys picked up on that. Anyway, so I just sculpted it until it was about how I liked. This is like a really high dense poly, so it's it looks like putty. Cool. And we're not trying to make it perfect for this, I'm just showing you what I did. And then what I did from there is I went over to sculpting mode, because it's a little bit more, it's a little bit easier to navigate. And this is probably what I learned most from this entire thing. So if we remesh this again somewhere around here, just so everything's even, yeah, look how dense that is. So I came over to the mask brush, and the mask brush is really what I learned to use. So what's cool about this is you can add an alpha to the texture of your mask. I don't know why there's not one there, but anyways, we'll remake one. And I just added a noise texture and kind of manipulated that until it was kind of the pattern I liked. And then I came over here and I did some modifying, something like that. I just masked out the entire thing with my mask tool. And then I came over to the left side and there are so many tools over here. You just kind of have to explore them and figure out what they do. And so what I used is I used the cloth filter. So I brought that over here and you have all these options and they do different things. I used the inflate brush and I just kind of played with it until it gave me the basic texture that I liked. And again, I'm doing this super fast and so it's not like the exact result I got on mine but just kind of play with it. Then if we clear the mask, make the object smooth, get something like that, right? And again, this is pretty different from what we have here. And again, some of my mesh is a bit wonky, so I'm not perfect. Yeah, and once I got it to, once I used the cloth filter to get the basic displacement done in kind of an, an inflated way, I stacked a bunch of displacement modifiers on top of it. And you definitely have to play around. So you just play around with it until you get something that's random enough to where you feel like a deep fryer would accomplish it, but not too crazy to where it, it renders out weird. Um, and so the thing I did after I got to this point, and I'll just show you on my, on my texture area, I, I brought it into Substance Painter and added a bunch of layered color effects and, and roughness effects like I did with the bread. But then when I brought it in, I did a couple of things um, to, to make it look more like chicken. And I'll take them off real quick, just so you can see what it looks like without those effects. Okay. So the first thing I did was I added a displacement, a shading effect, and that did something a little bit different than, so this is it without the shading effect. That was it with the shading effect. And so uh, what this effect did was it, we had, the ridges on the chicken already. But what this displacement was able to do was it was able to add kind of sub ridges all along these mesh ridges that I added. And that just gave it a little bit more crinkliness. Uh, and I think that kind of sold the effect more. Now, the second thing I did is I added some subsurface scattering to it. So if we kind of pull, I pull the subsurface down, you can see this looks like kind of a brick. There's no light coming through it, which ends up making it look really, really unrealistic. So what I did to combat that is I added some subsurface and subsurface is basically simulating light going through an object and basically everything has that to varying degrees. And so I put 0.45 weight and it's, it's pretty subtle, but you can see, especially around here, you get some of that glow of the light coming through the object. Okay, now the last thing I'll talk about because I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. And to be honest, I'm not super happy with my lettuce because it's pretty cartoony. But anyways, the last thing we'll talk about are the tomatoes. Tomatoes were super simple to do and I did them really quick. Basically, I just brought in some, I just brought in some cylinders and cut out the middle. And then what I did is I added some of that subsurface and transparency uh, to the inside of the cylinder. And for this particular render, you weren't ever gonna see the middle of the tomato. So I didn't even bother 
modeling that and I, I knew you were just going to see the very edge of the tomato so I, I didn't put a ton of work into making that realistic because I just wanted for the little peak you'd get I just wanted you to be able to see that it was kind of translucent and so yeah I, I brought in the cylinder I cut out the middle I made sure the typo topology was pretty solid and then I did that basic texturing but you see these water droplets which I think provide a lot of forgiveness for some of the modeling slash texturing failures of mine so the water droplets came from droplet gen which I don't have enough subscribers to get a sponsor but hey maybe one day it's basically an add-on it's like 15 bucks but for the amount of time it saves if you use it one time you basically pay for it but yeah it, it's a really quick generator I think it uses geometry nodes in order to accomplish it, but I, I just applied it to these cylinders. And as you can see over to the right, you have a lot of attributes that, that allow you to modify it how you want. But yeah, I made it, I figured out what I wanted it to look like and I applied it. Now, everything else on here is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Like I modeled this tray in probably three minutes and this tray paper is just a texture I found online that I brought in as a plane and just threw it in there. So the goal of this video and the goal of this project for me wasn't necessarily to make the perfect crispy chicken sandwich. Um, I am really proud of it, but like every 3D artist, I, I like it for about five minutes and they're like, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Like for instance, this lettuce is an atrocity. I think these tomatoes are, are too perfect. This chicken feels, a, I should have spent a little bit more time on it. It just feels a little bit too plasticky. Um, anyways, there are always things you can pick apart, but I think the valuable thing that I learned from this was the workflow when it comes to realistic food uh, rendering. Just like with any art, it's all about layering things on top of each other. And I hope you found, like I did, that the line between realism and stylized food isn't that definite. Like you could just stack a couple more effects on top of your render and all of a sudden it's a lot more realistic than it was before. And I think if you gain nothing else from this video, it, it would be that. Just if, if you're looking to make your stuff a little bit more realistic, just try another effect on top. Try pushing your texturing just a little bit further. Look to see how other disciplines add light to an object, study light, study how to achieve realistic light, whatever it is, just if your render is not quite where you want it to be, you can always add that extra layer on top to make it more realistic. And it's a lot faster and a lot more conducive to learning than throwing it away and starting over. Anyways, that's my rant. I, if any of you guys want to do realistic food, hit me up in the comments. Um, I'm probably gonna do a lot more of this stuff because I wanna push this workflow further. But yeah, if you wanna follow along the journey, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching, guys. Bye.